hyperbolas. Like the ellipse, the hyperbola is a set of points at a given distance from two foci. In the case of the hyperbola, the absolute value of the difference of the distances from a point to the foci is constant. Don't worry too much about this definition. It's just to put things in perspective. Here's the equation for a hyperbola. x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. The vertices. We're going to move a units to the left and right of the center. So we have our ver vertex there and a vertex there. The foci. Move c units to the left and right of the center, where c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So the length from the center to the focus is c. The asymptotes are the slope, which equals plus or minus b over a. And the asymptotes are lines that pass through the vertices of the rectangle between the vertices with length 2a and width 2b. Here we have the vertical hyperbola, in which case we switch the x minus h with the y minus k. So now we have y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. For the vertices, you move a units up and down from the center. For the foci, you move c units up and down from the center, where c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And the asymptotes are the slope, which are plus or minus a over b. Steps to graph a hyperbola in standard form. Find and graph the center. Plot points A, right and left of the center, and B, up and down for horizontal, or B, right and left, and A, up and down for vertical. Make a rectangle through the four points from previous step. Draw asymptotes that contain the diagonals of the rectangle. Sketch the graph of the hyperbola. As you notice by the shape of their graph, hyperbolas have an eccentricity greater than 1. Let's graph this hyperbola. First, we find and graph the center. The center is at h comma k. So since this is x minus h, that means that h is negative 1, since this is x minus negative 1. And we have a k value here of 2. So negative 1, 2. Next, we plot points a right and left of the center and b up and down for horizontal, or b right and left and a up and down for vertical. So is this a horizontal or a vertical hyperbola? Since the y is over here and not over here, this is going to be a vertical hyperbola. 25 is a squared, therefore a is 5. 9 is b squared, which means that b equals 3. Since this is a vertical hyperbola, which we know since this is the y is the positive term and then we have minus the x term here, uh, we can go b right and left. So we from the center, we count three units to the left and draw a point there. Three units to the right, draw a point there. For A, we go up and down. So we count five units up and then five units down. Next, we make a rectangle that goes through the four points. So a rectangle that looks like this. And there we go. Next, we're going to draw the asymptotes that contain the diagonals of the rectangle. And here are our asymptotes. Then we can go ahead and sketch the graph of the hyperbola. So we draw our points right there. That's where the minimum is going to be right there. The maximum will be right there. And we can just go ahead and sketch in those lines. Here's another example. We're going to be graphing this hyperbola. The first step is to find the center of the rectangle. And that's at h comma k. So we have x minus h here, so h is negative 5, y minus k, k is 4. So we have our center right there. Next, we have our a squared is 9, therefore a is 3. So we're going to be moving up and down from the center 3 units. And b squared is 4, so b is 2. Now we know that uh, this is a vertical hyperbola since we have the y term uh, here and the x term there. All right, so that's how we know that we move up three units and then to the left two units and then over here two units and down there three units. So we've created our box. Then we've put the asymptotes in from the corners of the rectangle. And we see that hyperbola opens up and down since this is a vertical hyperbola. The slopes of the asymptotes are 
3 over 2, positive and negative, because this is positive negative b over a. Actually, this is a over b, so this is not even right. a over b. So a is 3, b is 2. Sometimes a hyperbola will not always be in standard form where the center point is easy to find. Instead, it'll be in this general form that has x squareds, y squareds, x's and y's, and a constant um, on one side, or all the variable terms on one side and the constant on the other. So we're going to go through the steps required to convert the equation of a hyperbola from this general form to standard form again, to make it easier to find the center point and to graph. So let's get started. The first step is to move any constant that you have to the other side of the equation. So we'll still have our 2y squared plus our 8y minus 3x squared minus 18x, but then that will be equal to 25. The next step is to group our common terms together. So our 2y squared plus 8y and the negative 3x squared and negative 18x together and pull out a common factor from each of these two binomials that we now have grouped. So from the 2y squared plus 8y, we can factor out a 2. And when we do so, we will be left with y squared plus 4y. In the terms containing x variables, we can factor out a negative 3 because negative 3 and negative 18 are both multiples of negative 3. So when we pull the negative 3 out, we'll be left with x squared plus 6x for our two terms. And this is still equal to 25. The next step with finding the center point is to complete the square. So we still have our 2 here. We have our y squared plus 4y, but then we need plus a blank to fill in. We have minus 3, still have our x squared plus our 6x plus a blank to complete the square there. And then that's going to be equal to still 25, but we are going to add two blank spaces here that we are going to add or put extra constants in in order to finish the problem because remember whatever you do to one side of the equation you have to do to the other so now let's examine what we have here we have y squared plus 4y plus some constant c and i'm gonna rewrite my 4 to make sure it looks more legible there we go so we take our b term our positive 4, we divide it by 2, which is 2, and then we square it, which is 4. So we're adding 4 here. In reality, we're adding 4 times 2, or 8, to this side of the equation. So we also have to add 4 times 2, or 8, to the other side of the equation. And now let's look at our second set of variable terms with the x's. So we have plus 6x as our middle b term, we're going to divide that 6 by 2, and we're going to square it, and that's going to be 9. And remember, we're adding not just 9, we're adding 9 times negative 3 to the left side, so we have to do the same to the right side. Notice how I'm showing 9 times negative 3. And now we can simplify these, because these are now perfect square trinomials. So we're going to have 2 times Oh, before we rewrite it as perfect squares, we can then simplify 4 times 2, which is 8, and 9 times negative 3, which is negative 27. So instead of plus negative 27, you could write minus 27. And now we can write these as our perfect squares. So we're going to have 2 times y plus 2 squared minus 3 times x plus 3 squared. And when we add up, 25 and 8, we get 33, and 33 minus 27 is 6. And the last step is to divide all of our terms here by our constant that's all by itself on the right-hand side. So we're going to divide by 6, 
divide by 6, divide by 6, and we're going to simplify. So we're going to have just y plus 2 squared over 3 minus x plus 3 squared over 2 is equal to 1. And that is the final standard form of our hyperbola, or the final equation of our hyperbola in standard form.